Hello, it's me, Chandler Klebs. And this video is something that I've been considering for a while. See, I want to share my thoughts about the Da Vinci Code. Um, see, what's interesting about this is my mom has recently been listening to audiobooks of Dan Brown's books. And so she recently, she's listened to several of them because she, she has more time to listen to this stuff than I do. And, but I've listened to the entire audiobook of The Da Vinci Code, and I saw the movie. Um, and I, I also watched the movie of Angels and Demons. Haven't listened to the audiobook because she had to send that back. But this video is about The Da Vinci Code and what I think of it. It's, a, I mean, it's a, it was a pretty good book, and I can see why it's a bestseller. Um, but what's, I mean, it's, because it's a great mystery, first of all, um, you know, it's it's the kind of thing my mom likes because, you know, she likes Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, and she's also, uh, now she's ordered some Sherlock Holmes stuff because she just likes myst people solving mysteries. And the Da Vinci Code definitely has that. If you're looking for, like, a, um, a mystery where people find all these clues and codes that they have to solve... Then definitely you'll want to you'll want to either listen to the audiobook or watch the movie. Um, although you'll probably want to watch the movie because it's a lot shorter. The audiobook is like 13 discs long and it's got over a hundred chapters. It's like the longest thing ever, and it took and so it took like 13 days because I can only I only had enough time to listen to one disc in a day. Um, and it's a lot to take in, too, because it's like each disc will have, like, a full 80 minutes, you know? So, anyway, um, here's the thing. So, I don't want to spoil the story for people who haven't listened to it. But there is one thing, and here's something that I knew about the, the book before I ever read it. I knew that... Supposedly, it contains something about Jesus being married to Mary Magdalene. Um, and that uh, is, that right there is interesting. Um, because this is, I mean, it's different than what Christians believe, right? And see, years ago, I remember um, back when I was a Christian, um, I remember this guy telling me that Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene and had a kid. I remember it was this it was this guy that I played basketball with, Armin and Dino, my neighbors back where I used to live, and he was talking about that. I'm like, huh, that doesn't sound right. Never heard that before. Now I know where he got it. He had read the Da Vinci Code, and so I guess he believed that. And well, here's the funny part, and I find this absolutely hilarious. I mean, I'm not gonna spoil the mystery for you, I'm not gonna spoil the story for you. But apparently, people have taken this book too seriously. And I don't take the book seriously. I don't think it's fact. Um, but, I mean, some there might be facts in it, some historical facts. But what, what I find intriguing about it is that every time somebody writes a book that is a contrary in opinion to the, the status quo, you know, whatever is different than what the majority of people believe, then people write these other books and write whole movies against it. And, and that was true with The Shack. Like, if anybody's read The Shack, which was, I thought it was a pretty bad book, um, <laughs> but other people have written stuff against it, um, but anyway, about the Da Vinci Code. So my mom listened to the Da Vinci Code before I ever did. And then she's also listened to these other things by other people who tell how bad the Da Vinci Code is. And here's the issue. And here's why it's controversial. Because Nancy Drew and Sherlock Holmes and other mystery stories are not necessarily so controversial. But when some somebody makes a fiction book about um, the history of Christianity, um, well, that's going to upset the Christians, no doubt. Because, well, and, and I didn't get this, I, because 
I remember asking my mom, and this is this is really hilarious, and I will never forget this. I remember asking my mom, so why would it make a difference if Jesus had uh, had a kid with Mary Magdalene? And then she said something about how well they would be part God. So okay, first of all, even if I believe in God, which I don't, I'm an atheist now. I've I've seen too many flaws in religion to believe anymore. But, so now, not, so this leads to the idea. Apparently this book has led people to the idea that since they believe Jesus is God, supposedly, that if he supposedly had sex and produced children with somebody, then they would be like a half-human, half-God hybrid thing. So, being God is something that's genetically passed on, like it's a species, like like a crossbreed. So there's like a crossbreed between God and humans, and well, Jesus himself would be a crossbreed because supposedly God made Mary his mother pregnant. So I mean, it gets too weird. It, this is weird, okay? So I, I have a hard time wrapping my head around this belief system anymore. Even though I used to b believe that because that's what I was taught since I was a little kid. But now I look at it as an adult and I see um, like, okay, people are seriously having this issue. Okay, so um, first of all, I don't think, I don't think it's true. Like, I, first of all, I am agnostic on the question of whether there was a man named Jesus. I'm atheist in regard to him being God. I do not think there is a God, and I don't think Jesus could be God, even if he existed. So getting that out of the way, um, there, this still raises very bizarre questions. Why does this upset people enough that they are willing to write things against the Da Vinci Code? And I, here's what I think it is. I, I've been trying to figure this out because this is a mystery I'm trying to solve, why it's a big deal. Because I agree it's a big deal for a religious person. To me, it's not. But it's a big deal to somebody who has this view of Jesus that all he did was he was born and then who knows what he supposedly did for, for 30 years. And then he went around, taught people stuff, and, and did all these weird miracles, and then he... He died on the cross and then rose from the dead, and now he's in heaven somewhere and just doesn't give a shit about what happens on earth anymore, apparently. Um, but here's the thing. So, apparently, here's what it, here's what it comes down to, and this is where, where I come in, because the idea that somebody would be the physical descendant of Jesus Christ, that they would be... Uh, that he had sex with somebody and then he had children or something like that. Well, the idea of that is the, the I, reason people have a problem with that is because they believe that your value and how important you are depends on who your parents were. And you know what? I reject that. I reject that idea, this idea that you are more important because you are a descendant of Jesus Christ or because you're you're a descendant of some king or some politician. People do this, this idea of celebrity, and I don't care about celebrity. I only care about what people actually do. All And for my life, all that matters is what I do. It makes no difference how I got here. I like to think it doesn't make a difference because you know what? Quite honestly... I think it's disgusting how we all get here. That brainless act of sex that people do, it doesn't apparently require much intelligence, and then children are produced. Which, and to, 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 if I base the value of my life um, on my parents having sex, then no, I don't feel very good about that. And if anything, I would have to admit that um, if Jesus was celibate his whole life, if Jesus was a virgin for his his life um, before he died or whatever, suppose it was a man named Jesus who was just a, a teacher or whatever, and he was celibate and never married or had sex, well, at least he would be 
he would he, that would be a good idea to me. I don't necessarily believe it, but I like that idea. But I suppose in my mind, um, the idea that Jesus um, had sex uh, with somebody, well, the idea of that, I suppose it threatens the idea of him being God because it, it makes him more human. Like people have this idea that there's what's human and there's what's God or that's what's divine. And that gets complicated, and I haven't even figured out what all that means to me. Because, you know, like, divine, I mean, it doesn't make sense um, in the in any way. It never made, it made sense to me. Um, like, how do you separate that? Is there what's divine and what is not divine? Which, basically, divine seems to have something to do with God. And, well, that's another thing. I, I can't understand and I can't believe it. Because it's just too weird and it doesn't make enough sense. Everything has to make sense for me. Um, but, so, even, let's suppose it was true. Let's suppose that the, the, that the, in the, what happens in the story was true. That, that Jesus had a child with Mary Magdalene. Let's just suppose that that was true. Well, guess what? Jesus, that just makes Jesus as evil as the rest of humanity who has sex. So, I guess that's it. So, they prefer to, it's like, there's, so there's millions of Christians apparently around the globe who, they prefer to have, to believe in a Jesus that did not have sex. That's what they prefer to believe in. And you know what? I would prefer to believe in that too if I was going to believe in a Jesus. <sighs> Because I like celibacy, and I like the idea of the human race going extinct from non-procreation. So I like a celibate Jesus. But until I meet Jesus personally, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Because, hey, what can I do about it? There's nothing that I can do about it, and there's nothing you can do about it, whether or not Jesus had sex with Mary Magdalene and had a child. There's nothing we can do about it. So it's not something worth arguing about, but I do find it interesting. And I think perhaps Dan Brown's intention was to make a bestseller, which he certainly succeeded, because controversy is a great way to, um, to spread the message of something. And so I know that by even bringing this subject up, and recording this video, yeah, I probably will get a lot of controversy from it. But you know what? If I have to, I can disable comments and I can delete comments or whatever. But um, if you have anything useful to say, it particularly in regard to how the Da Vinci Code, if you've read it, affects your religious beliefs or lack thereof, you know, I am curious about that because I'm interested in the psychology behind this. It's, it's a fascinating subject. And so I'm glad that Dan Brown wrote this book um, because it, in, it's a conversation starter. And I think that this issue does get people talking about about the issues around religion, which can be good if talked about between friends, but if talked about on the public at large, sometimes people get really nasty about religion and politics, which is why I normally prefer to stay out of it. But The Da Vinci Code was such a fascinating book that I just I just had to say something about it. And since it's been, I haven't recorded videos for so long, I just really wanted to say all this. So anyway, um, okay, I guess that's all I have to say for now. And if I have anything else to say and I have time another day, then I'll record another video. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.